Peering through the haze of Venus, scientists have unearthed traces of phosphine, a potential marker for life. Few could match the Soviet Union's penchant for secrecy during the late 1960s. Despite their best efforts to probe Venus amidst its thick clouds and crushing atmospheric pressure, the Soviet Union chose to guard their findings about Earth's celestial neighbor, zealously. Now, 62 years post the dissolution of the Soviet Union, select photos from their clandestine Venus missions are beginning to surface, sending shockwaves through the scientific community. What exactly do these images unveil that prompts such concern? Furthermore, what other revelations about Venus did the Soviets withhold all these years? Join us in this video, where we delve into why experts are in a frenzy over declassified Soviet Union Venus photos, as we unearth the secrets of our sister planet and ponder, the possibility of extraterrestrial life. The United States and the Soviet Union were locked in a fierce competition, each vying to outdo the other in the realm of space exploration. The Soviets dealt the initial blow with the historic launch of Sputnik in October 1957, marking the dawn of the space age as the first artificial satellite orbited the Earth. Their successes continued as they achieved milestones such as sending the first living creature into Earth's orbit and igniting the first rocket in space. Notably, they also claimed the first soft landing on the moon and the pioneering feat of sending the first woman into the cosmos. Not to be outdone, the United States swiftly responded by establishing its own space agency, NASA. Determined to regain the lead, they embarked on a relentless pursuit of space exploration milestones. Their triumphs included sending the first American into orbit around the Earth, and, perhaps most notably, achieving the monumental feat of landing the first humans on the lunar surface during the Apollo 11 mission. With limited knowledge about Venus beyond its similar size to Earth and its hostile atmosphere, the mysteries surrounding the planet intrigued scientists worldwide. Determined to unlock these mysteries, the Soviets embarked on the ambitious Venera mission. Unlike the Moon, landing a human on Venus posed insurmountable challenges due to its extreme atmospheric pressures and toxic gases like sulfur. Undeterred, the Soviets devised a plan to deploy a spacecraft to this forbidding planet. If successful, it would mark a monumental achievement as no other nation had ventured to explore Venus in such a daring manner. Launched in 1961, it was intended for Venus exploration, but unfortunately, it never reached its destination. Instead, it passed by Venus at a distance of 62,000 miles, and communication with the probe was abruptly lost. This setback spurred the Soviets to embark on the development and launch of Venera 2 four years later. On November 12, 1965, Venera 2 took flight. However, mirroring the fate of its predecessor, it too only managed to conduct a flyby of Venus. Despite being equipped with all necessary instruments for data recording and storage, Soviet scientists were left empty-handed as the mission went silent upon nearing Venus. On March 4, 1996, Venera 2 was officially declared missing. Subsequent investigations unveiled that it had succumbed to overheating and technical malfunctions. The initial setbacks of the Venera mission prompted the USSR to innovate and develop more advanced technology for their subsequent probes. On November 16, 1965, Venera 3 launched, unfortunately meeting a fiery end as it crashed into Venus due to the planet's extreme heat. However, the mission wasn't deterred, and on June 12, 1967, Venera 4 successfully landed on Venus, intact and ready to explore. Once on the surface, the array of instruments on board Venera 4 sprang to life, diligently recording and transmitting data back to Earth. Prior to launch, rigorous testing ensured the spacecraft could withstand Venus's chaotic atmospheric pressure and temperature. The Soviet scientists spared no effort in guaranteeing Venera 4's resilience in the face of Venus's hostile environment. Among the wealth of knowledge gleaned from Venera 4 was the revelation that Venus lacked a magnetic field akin to Earth's protective shield. Additionally, the planet's atmosphere was found to be overwhelmingly composed of carbon dioxide, ranging between 90 to 95 percent. This discovery painted Venus as an anti-Earth of sorts. Earth's magnetic field is pivotal for sustaining life, shielding us from harmful solar radiation. The absence of such protection on Venus underscored its unsuitability as an Earth substitute. Furthermore, the abundance of carbon dioxide, 
a greenhouse gas detrimental to our ozone layer, reinforce the stark contrast between our two planets. The revelations about Venera 4 have upended our understanding of Soviet space missions. Contrary to what we were led to believe, Venera 4 didn't actually land on Venus. Instead, it comprised a main bus, a landing probe, and a suite of advanced instruments snugly housed in a pressure vessel. Its power source? Solar energy, with a pair of solar panel wings spanning about 4 meters. An antenna was mounted at one end of these panels. While small thrusters facilitated altitude control, a sizable rocket handled mid-course maneuvers. To withstand the intense conditions, the spacecraft boasted a heat shield and radar. Communication relied on two 922 Emirates radio transmitters. Despite Venera 3 achieving the milestone of being the first man-made object to impact or crash on the surface of another planet, the Soviets remained driven for more success. Hence, they embellished the narrative surrounding the Venera 4 mission. You see, the complexities of Venus's atmosphere made it challenging for Soviet scientists to ascertain whether Venera 4 had successfully landed. Initially, as it commenced transmitting data, it was estimated to be approximately 16 miles above the surface. However, later analysis revealed it was actually 30 miles above ground when data transmission began. Subsequent investigations concluded that it never reached the surface intact. Venera 7 stands as a masterpiece of the Soviet space program, setting a benchmark for all subsequent missions. Prior to its historic landing on Venus on December 15, 1970, the USSR had launched two missions, Venera 5 and 6, in 1969. While these missions provided valuable data, they fell short of landing on Venus itself. The triumph of the Venera 7 can be attributed to its cutting-edge technology. Designed to endure pressures up to 18 megapascals and temperatures of 1000 Drazen DGF, it boasted advanced features that surpassed its predecessors. Although the actual temperature on Venus falls below this threshold, Soviet engineers prioritized robustness. Equipped with an array of scientific instruments, including accelerometer sensors and radar, the Venera 7 was a marvel of engineering. Critical to its success was the deployment of a parachute during descent. Opening approximately 60 km from the surface, it facilitated atmospheric testing and aided in a controlled landing. Despite a parachute malfunction leading to a seemingly rapid descent, the Venera 7 managed to touch down gently at a speed of around 37 Pschutreich, a significant improvement over earlier models. Thanks to its sturdy construction and sophisticated technology, the lander sustained the impact with ease. Following touchdown, Venera 7 transmitted crucial data back to Earth for 53 minutes, revolutionizing our understanding of Venus. It was through this mission that scientists learned the actual temperature on Venus hovers around 900 degree arcs, with a pressure of 9 megapascals. In summary, Venera 7's successful mission to Venus epitomizes the ingenuity and perseverance of the Soviet space program, paving the way for future exploration of our solar system. Venera 8 represented a significant leap forward from its predecessor, Venera 7, in the exploration of Venus. Launched in 1972, this Soviet space probe boasted similar instrumentation, but featured upgraded landing systems, marking a notable advancement in the Soviet space program. After a 118-day journey from Earth to Venus, Venera 8's capsule braved the tumultuous Venusian atmosphere. Unlike its predecessors, Venera 8 was equipped with enhanced landing mechanisms designed to mitigate the harsh conditions. By employing innovative braking techniques, the spacecraft achieved a remarkably gentle landing, significantly reducing landing speed. However, like Venera 7, Venera 8 succumbed to the hostile Venusian environment after a mere 50 minutes, limiting the duration of data collection. Nevertheless, the data retrieved proved invaluable. Notably, scientists obtained crucial insights into the lighting conditions on Venus, essential for assessing the feasibility of photography. Moreover, Venera 8's observations revealed surprising details about Venus's atmosphere, indicating that its clouds existed at higher altitudes than previously believed. One of the most significant contributions of the Venera 8 mission was its analysis of Venus's soil composition. By measuring the concentrations of various elements, including uranium, thorium, and potassium, alongside other elements akin to those found in Earth's soil, scientists gained vital knowledge about the planet's geology. The Venera 7 and 8 missions stand as testament to the Soviet Union's prowess in space exploration, 
particularly during the intense competition of the space race era. Despite the technological limitations of the 1970s, these feats underscore the remarkable achievements of Soviet engineering and scientific ingenuity.